have we have a very special guest, a friend Elliot from Hakuna Machete, uh came back because we have to talk about the Mandalorian. <laughs> it seems to be the tradition. Yeah. Well this is Lily's been very intentional about this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so welcome, welcome. Uh, before we go anywhere, Katie's going to introduce the podcast. Bit. All right. Yeah. Morning, everybody. <laughs> welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm aware this comes out in the evening, but for me, it's morning. I'm Katie. That's Lily K. That's our lovely friend Elliot, who's eating things. <laughs> Look, it's the mo- we're recording in the morning ish. Morning. Well, it's the morning for them. It's almost lunchtime for me. So, like, yeah. It's still morning. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. It's not uh, past 12 for you. It's still morning. Okay, fine. (laughs) But it's getting there. It is getting there, you're right. It is getting there. Uh, All right. Uh, So we are here today to do our usual thing, which is, you know, the Mandalorian came out or anything Star Wars related. We invited Elliot. (laughs) Now we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it. Wow. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) That sounds like a great idea. Mm. Yes. But before we do that, Elliot went and saw everything live Mm. at the Star Wars celebration. So we need a little, uh, tell us what what was it like to live the dream (laughs) 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 and to be there. Just, Just, you know, just give us a quick, quick what happened there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll give my biggest takeaway from Star Wars Celebration because it's something that's really stuck out to me. Obviously, we know how divisive the Star Wars fandom has been since 2017. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, has it been so? And it was, it's kind of gotten to a point where I've gotten bored of talking Star Wars online because you just get met with the same old crap all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, except when I'm here with you guys, this is fun. Um, and... At Star Wars Celebration, it was great to be in a room with, over the four days, what must have been 100,000, 120,000 people that just love Star Wars, all of it. Or if there's parts they don't love, they shut up about it and celebrate the bits that they do love. And that was just lovely. And since Star Wars Celebration, I've got two videos up on the channel about Star Wars. And I'm just super excited about things again. Um, to quickly plug the videos are five reasons to get excited about Ahsoka and what to expect from Star Wars Visions because I was at both of those panels so giving just a little bit more insight on what's going to happen with both those shows without giving anything away that we learned at the panels or saw at the panels as well because I've seen Uh, some stuff I've seen some stuff you've seen some stuff I mean Uh, in fairness to the Ahsoka stuff like that all got announced but we got to see Lars Mikkelsen in the blue and full. So that was really fun. <gasps> nice. Okay, now I'm I'm, I'm extremely jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I I love I love uh Grand and the Throne. It's like oh, yeah. my favorite book series uh that ever came out from Star Wars. I'm I'm just gonna admit that. Mm. Uh come on, like him in Rebels is just the best thing ever. Oh, um, so yeah, Rebels was my introduction to Thrawn. I haven't read the Air to the Empire stuff. And I, ju- I was just like, I can see why people are excited about this fella. <laughs> and I've read, I've read all the new books, the canon books, and I will, yes. I do want to read the old trilogy ahead of Ahsoka. Um, I want to understand why people love that so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to know what was it like live seeing Lars because and come up to the stage. I mean, it was great. So we saw the the cut of the trailer with his face first, and then he came out. But I mean, the place was electric; like it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was it was great, and it was kind of what, you know, I I'd hoped for. I'd hoped that he was going to continue on the role because he's just got the best voice for it, and you know, he's already more predominantly a screen actor anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah, and it's just <laughs> it was the best news of the weekend for me. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was so happy when he was called up on the stage. And, you know, I first saw it on the Star Wars official uh, channel that, yeah, sure. you know, he's back. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the greatest news ever. Uh, so, yeah. And then I just watched the video and, and I cried. I'm not even going to hide it. I cried. I was like, oh, that's not like you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no. So weird. <laughs> Unknown. <laughs> Unknown. Also, I am once again baiting the lights away. This camera is just gonna get 
closer and closer to me because it's it's very sunny here finally after days of fucking rain all the time um all right so good to see you i'm i'm sure it was great i wish i could have been there but like money <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my dad technically had, had. had a ticket for all four days and <gasps> messaged us all uh i was like uh i can't uh, i'm not gonna go but anybody's allowed to take this uh and i was sitting there like i'm in amsterdam why didn't Ugh. you tell me this sooner <laughs> oh god that I is so gone. frustrating yeah oh god i wish oh, i wish i could have been there honestly even if it was, if it was just just today just one day i mean in <laughs> fairness i would have booked an early flight home from amsterdam just saying. Yeah. I got there on <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. E. Got there Eesh. on Wednesday. And it was like, day after, he was like, got this. And I was like, Dad, come on. <laughs> Were you in Amsterdam just for holiday as well? Yeah. Ah, oh, mensch. <laughs> as the Germans would say, which is kind of next door to Holland. So it's very sure. close. The yeah. languages are very similar. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All righty then, uh, let's get into The Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, first, I am interested to hear your overall thoughts of the season itself. Like, what did you think? How did you enjoy it? Just, you know, just a quick take summary. On. Yeah. Go for it. I think overall, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed it, I think. <laughs> I can't, I actually, well, it comes out weekly, so I'm trying to, like, think of what some of the first few episodes were. I think so, I remember the first episode just sort I've, of opening. I've done the Go same. On. I've just opened the, the Wikipedia page so I can look at all the episode descriptions and be like, what happened in the early ones again? Yeah, I might just get up the IMDb and do the same thing. Um, I think I remember watching the opening episode and just being like, all right, cool. Yeah. I mean, it's the Mandalorian. We're, we're back, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I remember the opening episode didn't quite land with me. I think as it got on, it, it certainly definitely gripped me more and more. I think what I overall really enjoyed about this series was that it definitely seemed to be more centred around Mandalore and Mandalorians much more than the other two seasons have been. And I know that the initial premise was not necessarily about the whole of Mandalore and all of the Mandalorians, and that's that's kind of fine. But I think it got so wrapped up in being a Jedi-centred story, particularly in season two, Mm. that it was beginning to lose me a little bit because we've had Jedi-centred stories. That's all of Star Wars. And I wanted something to be centred around someone different. And it definitely seemed to pick up that way as the season went on, um, in my opinion. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at them now. Yeah, it's not really that long a season, is it? It, No, it's not. It's like, I, I, um... I, I think this is my favorite season today, and I think it's for nice. the reasons that you were saying, because um those first two seasons, as fun as they were, I was kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's as far as I got with it. But like the actual the stuff around Mandalore and the sort of deeper connection to that sort of stuff was way more interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. And actually seeing Grogu not as like a little Jedi um, character and more as like Mandalorian <laughs> in training <laughs> made me like him. Sure. Wait, I, hold I, on. I, I didn't <laughs> like him. You didn't like him before? <laughs> what? I, I'd, I'd had no real feelings towards him beforehand. I've I'm told you this Katie. before. <laughs> I, no, I didn't. didn't. <laughs> hey, yeah, I absolutely have. He does really nothing for me most of the time. Um, but it, it's like I felt like they gave him far more of like a a, a spot and a and a personality like front mm. forward in this season compared to the other two. Um, yeah, well, I mean, season two was just Grogu tries to eat everything that moves. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Which is it's very weird. Thing. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it was funny. I mean, you know, I'll never forget. He the blue still moment. does that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it feels like that's not just his, that's not his whole personality anymore. Yeah, it feels more exactly. like this is a pairing and these two have each other's backs. Um, we have father and son now, officially. Yeah. He <laughs> cried. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes. I won't lie. When that happened, I went, he's not already. Yeah. I mean, he is, but like now it's, it is set up. Official. Yeah. yeah. It's official. So I'm like, yeah. I loved it. I, I honestly, 
I stopped reading about it because people annoyed me so much, especially mm-hmm. after episode three, which I think was fantastic. Um, you should talk properly about episode three because I really liked that one. Yes, yes, we, we, we're going to get into that. Uh, and people were like, oh, it's just filler and it just doesn't make sense. And <sighs> Have you seen any Star Wars like ever? <laughs> like, you know, Have you seen The Mandalorian? And, I'm sorry, yes. but most of the show is filler. It, 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 <laughs> that... <laughs> Uh, for one and second it's you know Dave Filoni is heavily in it and we know now obviously officially as well that that uh, he's gonna make a movie that just gonna bring mm. together all of these characters so of course they're not just gonna be like Mando and Grogu walking around and getting into some trouble they're gonna do some word building here like shut up <laughs> <laughs> I was so annoyed with people I was like you can't be serious <laughs> And they but it's kind of but like... it's it's a weird one, isn't it? Because that episode really beautifully um, shows us the world, as you say, the world building, the world between um, Force Awakens and Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Which you know, a big thing for me in Force Awakens was like, how have we gotten to this point in the universe where there's exactly. just a second empire? Like, mm-hmm. how is that just a thing? Yeah, and this did a really good job of showing kind of the downfalls of like. The New Republic. The, the, yeah, the New Republic in general, but also there's like a really specific term for it and I can't think of what it is right now because it's 10 a.m. and I'm just not awake. <laughs> um, but like the, in the way that Andor was like, here is fascism in motion. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of like, here's a oh, society trying to get away from fascism by kind of, it's not like doing fascism again, but like it becomes, everything has become so structured in that mm. society and like i loved watching the the really all the really rich people of coruscant being like it doesn't really bother me yeah <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> new republic old republic empire it's all the same to me and it's like of course it is god yeah. nothing changed <laughs> for you <laughs> but I it's guess. like it's just like the, the whole thing of um being able to see why the new republic failed because mm. the new republic was built not on a society on a on a system of like actually caring about people it just sort of like put people in systems and was like yeah. well, let, let that take care of everything and it's like well that's what you failed at the first time <laughs> <laughs> you idiots <laughs> well, and, and then that and that but that perfectly just to just to be that guy mm. that perfectly bleeds into what happens in the last jedi right and how yeah. luke mm-hmm. says just by restarting what came before was a massive fuck up. Excuse yeah. the language, yeah. but um, and hopefully that when we get to the, to Ray's new film, mm. that things will be done in a different way, and so we're not just, you know, she's taken on those teachings from Luke and from mm. Leia and from the Jedi texts, and it is yeah. still weird to me that that's what they're doing with that movie because I was sitting there like that's what Luke was doing. I mean, you, I'm, I'm you hoping... make Luke again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm hoping it's not just a. She is currently rebuilding it, and it's more of she has rebuilt it. I don't know. We'll see. And who knows? I mean, I'm excited. Like... I'm just great. I'm just happy to see her back. To be fair, but isn't it like a 15 year time jump or something? Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. So I You'd expect you some know. growth in there. Yeah, some <laughs> you'd expect in some. <laughs> when I say growth, I don't mean of the character. I mean of a Jedi order. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna see. Yes. Anyway, tangents. It's, it's really yes. interesting to me at the moment because I'm. I was just telling you, I'm listening to a podcast called A More Civilized Age, where they're going through all the episodes of the Clone Wars, mm. uh, and we'll be going through everything Star Wars related, kind of in order. Um, but at the moment, they're right, right at the beginning of the Clone Wars, and they all the stuff that they're talking about when it comes to like how the Jedi work and how they're kind of not great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, yeah, no, for sure, actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's the great thing about Clone Wars is it just it does show just how it how the Jedi felt how they allowed themselves to be sucked into that war. You know, Mm -hmm. they 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 should have you know on Geonosis gone cool right. We're done. You guys handle this. Basically, what they've been saying it's like, why did you put your name on the check? Just like, don't get yourself a clone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow them to save you on Geonosis and then crack on from there. Yeah. Yeah. I just I really enjoyed that that episode of watching it like this is really fucking interesting <laughs> like <laughs> as a political piece it's really it's really interesting um yeah just I, I, I really liked it and then it, it I think that this, the season also allowed itself to be fun 
in a lot of yeah. places um yeah. which i feel like people weren't paying attention to either Mm-mm. um i also appreciated the fact that um i didn't feel shut out of the season like i did last season mm, I get um, what you mean. yeah because I had a real trouble with last season because I had I wasn't familiar with like anything outside of a lot of the sort of very mainstream Star Warsy stuff. Yeah. So when uh the blue bounty hunter guy whose name I can't remember, um That was in Boba Fed. That was in Boba Fed as well. Yeah. Yeah. I I was sitting there like, I don't know who this is, and you have done nothing to tell me who this is. <laughs> he and just the rest sort of, of us turned are all up and it's the, that's the thing. They kind of like they set the scene up to be like it's this guy and I'm like okay <laughs> you do yeah. still need to do a bit of work to tell the audience who aren't familiar with the other stuff who this is and why they're important and they just didn't do that <laughs> yeah so I mean, there was a couple of moments like that I found in, in season I mean it was kind of like... a lot of season 2 of The Mandalorian with Bo-Katan, with Ahsoka mm. um, I mean look Boba Fett and, and, and Luke are fine because everyone knows who they are Yeah, um, yeah 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 but yeah, Bo Katanas. I don't know if you're going to hear it, but um, the London Marathon runs past my house, and they, <laughs> I can just I can hear the, the 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 first strands of people have arrived. So okay. it might start to get cheery, and it's it's. I mean, maybe they're celebrating us talking good yeah. things about the Mandalorian. Mm. So we'll just take it as that, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. exactly, exactly. No, I I think uh, it's well. I think what this season did much much better mm. uh, is just including everyone a lot better mm-hmm, in yeah. a way like even if you're not familiar with with all that star wars has to offer i i think people had an easier time like i i i can refer to my brother who will never watch rebels yeah. or or clone wars which is still a big mistake bro <laughs> just <laughs> putting it out there yeah uh, especially with a soaker on the way you gotta watch rebels yeah, exactly um uh he's like you know he was more on board with the whole thing like mm. you know we, when we talked about it after the episodes, he was like, yeah, 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 okay, that makes sense. Like, I didn't feel like I, I was just, you know, shut out from the entire conversation. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same. Like, okay, okay, good. And good, honestly, good. To, I'm glad to hear that as well, because I, I felt like there was a part of me that felt a bit more involved just because I managed to find an in in Andor. Mm-hmm. And since then, I have learned a little more in places. I kind of have a yes. better sense of the the world and, like, some of the histories of it, um, not in depth, but like in certainly in, in some places. So I, I did wonder if there was that was part of it that I was more open to. But I think it is also just that they allowed more space in. Like I didn't know who Bokatan was in season two, but I felt like I have a I feel like I have a pretty strong sense of who she is now. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. uh I did see somebody say, and I was interested to hear what you guys had to say about this. Um, that Bo-Katan's kind of arc in this show is kind of the same arc she's had in every show she's turned up in. Do we feel that's true? I suppose kind of, yeah. Kind of? Yeah, because actually at the end of Clone Wars, that final storyline, she sort of rocks up to find Ahsoka to be like, we need to get more and save Mandalore. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and then she starts off in Death Watch and they... Death Watch are an organization that take themselves out of Mandalore because they don't agree with the pacifist nature. Mm. So Mandalore during the Clone Wars stay neutral. Mm. Uh, that's what Bo's sister, Satine, uh, keeps them neutral because obviously Mandalore's history is just war. Right. Yeah. And so she wants them, you know, she wants them to stay neutral in this war. And Death Watch disagree with that. Um, and Bo Katan was originally part of Death Watch, though when Maul comes along and tries to take control of Mandalore, she then fights against Maul, whereas some of Death Watch join Maul. Mm. And it kind of and that's when the night owls split off and she kind of has her, her, little, her night owls. Hell gang. Yeah. Okay. But yes, it is kind of always trying to reclaim Mandalore from someone, Darth mm. Maul or the Remnant Empire. <laughs> yeah. But she did it now. Though. <laughs> yeah, finally. Her mission finally. is complete. Yeah. It was it was Well, so she's just got a mythosaur to fight now, but yeah. Yeah, but you know, that's like it's kind it. of like I think like you should just leave him down there. I yeah, he's chilling. just chilling really, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just leave him. Boy. Just be like, Sign don't me. go down there. There's a mythosaur <laughs> down there. Uh he exists down there. We live up here. 
we're yeah. all happy. Easy, easy. Literally. Easy life. Uh, what was something that you maybe didn't like this season? Or was there anything that you were like, eh? I think I liked episode three in Dr. Pershing's story. It was a nice, different pace. Mm. Yes. And I loved Keller and Beck as well. And I'm mm. a, I'm at best getting that sort of redemption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm but they ended up for me just kind of we're gonna show you these things, and then that's kind of it. I think the Dr. Pershing stuff had more of a an arc later on in the show. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of Moff Gideon trying to control cloning and making sure that he is the only one with the power to to continue on the yeah. Kevin Owens work. So I can see the link there. Um, they're just, there wasn't, I I feel that they only showed the Keller and Beck stuff because it's been teased of, oh my gosh, who saved Grogu from Order 66? Mm. And it was like, this person saved Grogu. And then we don't see how it affected Grogu again at all or what more of that story was. And yeah. maybe that will come in season four. Maybe we'll, you know, yeah. the, John Favreau will fill in more of the pieces, you know, so it's not, as if it's not going to happen and, and yeah. that's all we're going to mm. get. But mm. it did just feel like it was a set piece to just have a bit of fun, which I'm fine with because I had a great time watching that scene. Yeah. And and as I said, it was lovely for I'm at best to get that redemption. But uh, yeah, it, yeah it, I just kind of felt a bit like, OK, but what what why are we learning about this now? Mm. And how is that affecting Grogu now? And I I never quite got that. No, I'm 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 a, I'm kind of with you on that, but like at the same time, um, I feel like that's something that this show has done a lot, generally speaking, where it will sure. just sort of give you pieces of information, like, and then there's this. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't really do anything. With yeah, it. it will just sort of like hand you something and go, "This is cool, right?" Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Next um, up, please. Uh, uh, but it's like I feel like it's done that since the beginning. So it's one of those things that's where true. some people, I feel like, have been so mad about that being a thing <laughs> um, that it's almost like we've been watching the same show, right? Because I feel like we've been doing that since the start. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's in the same way that Book of Boba Fett went on an absolute two episode tangent as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, but they at least had. <laughs> I say they at least. It's still the same creator. They at least had the decency to do two full episodes of tangent as opposed to random filler things here and there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, and, and I think that kind of speaks volumes to just my overall thoughts on the on this season is that really the only th- bad things I've got to say is where did these extra bits of fun, what do they mean? Mm. You know, as I said, like I had a good time with those bits that I'm, you know, mm. but it's just where do they lead? Yeah. And if that's kind of the worst of it, then oh my gosh. <laughs> You yeah, know what I mean, like it's not that bad, really, is it? Kids? Yeah, I I couldn't think of, I can't think of anything that made me go, well, that was stupid. <laughs> like you know, yeah. and yeah. nothing about it was just like, well, that was bad. It was just like it, it it the the show has always been very meandery. It likes to sort of go off in a random direction and then sort of be like, it it's more presenting a world to you than it is like telling so much of like a a a really um linear story and i think this is the most linear season that they've done um which doesn't bother me because i actually quite i quite liked that there was like actually a a thread going on Mm -hmm. um it did i would say maybe my only criticism is that maybe it is a bit too short um yeah it kind of almost went down the MCU show rabbit hole a little bit, didn't it? In which it kind of did a lot of things. And then the final two episodes was like, oh yeah, we, we, what? <laughs> we, yeah we've got to do some stuff. Let's do some stuff quickly. Um, yeah, definitely felt a bit like that in that sense. Mm. But, you know, I say that and I, I've seen a lot on Twitter recently. You know, I mean, one division. let's say one division and Loki were really well accepted in general. Mm. And then Falcon and the Winter Soldier, let's say. But there's a massive redemption for Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Twitter recently. Is there? Which it's is so really funny. interesting to see. I was just see. telling Lily. I was yeah, been coming true. up on my uh, my time hop every week because it's been about two years since it came out. And I was like, I know that show didn't do everything the best. But a lot of the stuff it did do was really great. Yeah, <laughs> it was. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was very grounded. I, I mean, anyway, I, I could speak hours about that show, as you both know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it would be fair. 
to be honest. <laughs> like, you know, I, yes. I, I, I think we can just uh, quickly plug in on a tiny tangent that uh, I watched uh, the Ghosted movie. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the only good thing about it, and I'm so sorry, Chris, you know, I love you. But mm. the only good thing about it is Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie <laughs> doing a cameo in it. <laughs> they can <laughs> That's so fun. And that's I've heard the their cameos go yeah. Is it bad then? Because I did. Think... It's really bad. Like oh, I, no. I suffered through it. I'm not gonna oh, lie. No. I was like, Ugh. that's a shame. That's uh, a shame. The it dialogue really is fun. Just, it it looked really fun, and I was excited because I I oh, love yeah, Chris Evans. Uh, uh, I I really like Anna de Armas, despite of blonde. But mm-hmm. like you know, I'm not gonna go there today. Uh, but uh, I was like. It's just bad. It's just bad writing. Like, the, the, <laughs> like Chris's character was so unlikable at places and so mm. fucking annoying that I was like, I'm gonna fell out of love of Chris Evans in a minute. So. Lily, some things are are just impossible in this world, and that I'm, is one of them. No matter the circumstance. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but uh, that cameo there was really good. Tangent over. <laughs> nice. Uh. I think the only thing that was a bit eh for me mm. uh, in in the whole season is that it just ended too quick, mm. which we already mentioned. Mm. I was like, I was ready to do more with it and to yeah. get into it more, and then suddenly it was like, oh, no, it's okay. But I love the ending. I'm I'm gonna put it out there. It was so redeeming to see a happy ending and to see that the. F- all the fan theories just didn't come true. I was like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> because let's be fair, one of the big ones was that the armorer is is the spy and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. she's going to betray them. And I was like, guys, it's a trap. It's too <laughs> obvious. It's too fucking obvious that she's it would a, be her. She's such a strange character. I really like her, but she's so like, like obviously you can't see her face ever so she's so like you can't get any sense of like what her deal is mm. at any point ever <laughs> where I'm like you're strange I enjoy <laughs> you but you're very strange yeah I, think that's I mean I'm kind of glad she wasn't a spy as well because it yeah. meant that she could fly in the air with her armoring tools and smash stormtroopers in the face which that was awesome. <laughs> had me howling with laughter i just thought it was so great i think that's one of the things i really like about this show is that some stuff happens you're know, like that's fucking ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> the talking Literally. stick from like episode i don't know five or something stupid or like six or something like when I they were just like four. yeah well, they were just like on their little, you know, on on the little planet, and they were like, "We're having a meeting," and they're literally there with the talking stick, like nobody yeah. gets to talk unless you have the talking <laughs> stick. <laughs> so good. <laughs> this is stupid. It's so it. good. Though. It's it's really good. Go on. Uh, I did have trauma from the last episode. I could just put it out there. Uh, I knew that Grogu was gonna save his dad, like. That was obvious. Mm. Like when mm. when you couldn't see him with with Bo-Katan and the others mm. running away, I was like, "Rogue's gonna save the day." I know it. But then he did it twice, and the second time, I was like, "Oh fuck, no, no, don't get <laughs> Rogue. What are you doing?" No, I was like, <laughs> "Just," <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, "If they're gonna kill this boy, this tiny little boy, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not watching Star Wars again, like ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's no way you're gonna do that." Hey. At some point, he's either going to have to die or he's going to turn up in the New Order film. I because... really hope. I really hope he's going to turn yeah. up. I'm not going to lie. I'm I like... want to see what happens when he starts talking. <laughs> exactly. Literally. I'm so excited. Because the kid's got sass the way he was using IG-12. This is (laughs) part of the reason why I've become very, I've I've grown a fondness for him, is that, yes, he's got, they've given him that, like, slightly sassy personality where he's like, no, no, I don't give a shit, actually. (laughs) Bad baby. Bad baby. (laughs) Did you, did you, okay, I know Kate didn't, and I don't think I I, I sent it to you, but did I send you the video, Elliot, where uh, someone noticed that there's an extra line there. <laughs> Am I a yeah. motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, I've gone back to the episode to see if it's actually true, but... What, what's this? No, oh, it's crazy! Well... <laughs> it's when they give him the IG-11. Mm. And and then, you know, it's bad baby, no touchy. And then he goes away and he goes, I'm out, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> 
And I was like, how did I not hear this? Or I didn't check either. I was mm. like, yeah. I just trust TikTok. That is true. <laughs> because so many people. Bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> But so many people brought it up, and I'm like, it's a fact now. I'm just living with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said that Don. The Alenian walks story. out and goes, "I'm out, motherfuckers." <laughs> That's the best thing. Uh, okay, then let's talk about the episode that had everyone freak out for no reason whatsoever because I fucking love that episode. Is the 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 cameo episode with Lizzo, Jack Black, and Christopher Lloyd. That's I want to hear your thoughts. Fun. I it liked was... it. <laughs> Thank you, Elliot. What do you think? Uh, uh yeah, uh, it was fine. I thought it was fine. I actually wish they had expanded on Christopher Lloyd's character a bit more because mm, I really like the idea of a separatist still being around at that time. Yeah, still mm-hmm. loyal to Count Dooku. Like, what? I want. Tell me more about him. <laughs> I want to know. Um, yeah, look, my, my, I mean, my thought with that episode actually was kind of, I was a bit miffed at first because I was like, the issue is, is that when the actor's name will always outweigh the character's name, mm. is it worth the cameo? And, but then also the question is, yeah, but hang on, why do they also not get to cameo in Star Wars? Like, why should, why should we just not, you know, why should mm. that just not be allowed? So it's kind of, I kind of landed six of one, half a dozen of the other on it. And as with all things, I always end up with, well, it's been made now, so why does it matter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so true. That's... I don't know. It was one of those things. I didn't realise that it would annoy people so much. Yeah. Especially as, like, it does cameos with characters all the time. Yeah. Um, kind of like, what? why Why is Lizzo showing up a big issue for you? Do you hate to see a big black woman succeed? <laughs> is that what Literally. It is? Literally. I, I honestly she was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I I the whole thing, uh, you know the whole story that Tom Holland just manifests everything for himself. Mm. And Lizzo did the same thing. <laughs> she did it. She was like, you know, I, I love Star Wars, I love the Mandalorian. I think she dressed up as Grogu or or at some point yeah, she I was think she just did. Yeah. And there you go. Now she's holding right. Grogu and, and right. I did uh, Grogu and I'm like you go go i love you <laughs> yes yes and 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 it's not just you know it's not for me it wasn't just a silly thing first of all the second they entered that room jack black didn't even have to say anything i was like that's jack black <laughs> i love this man yes <laughs> i was actually, so excited <laughs> i mean i'm loving the jack black renaissance at the moment i'm assuming you both watched super super mario brothers i saw it in amsterdam I haven't Great. I haven't seen it yet, but oh, you haven't go seen ahead. It yet. Yeah. And well, it's and there's there's nothing to necessarily spoil, but his his performance in that film is it just It is great. the best part of it. Yeah, yeah, sure. easily. I bet. Easily. I bet. They, they 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 do something with Bowser's character that I did not expect. And I mean you probably if you've heard the song that's come out from the yeah. beaches, then yep. yeah, you'll understand what it is they do with his character. Look, I do have and a it's little... just great. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a little story surrounding that. So when we went to the cinema, it's uh, we went to a place called Tushinsky's, which is the mm. oldest. I think it's the oldest cinema in Amsterdam. It's from okay. like it was built in like 1904 or something like that. It feels mm. very Art Deco. Wow. Um, gorgeous building. But we went in because it was Thursday. It was the day after we arrived, and it was like pissing it down. And we just were like, mm. we just don't want to be outside. We gotta go do something. Uh, that would be nice. We were like, fuck it, let's go see Super Mario Bros. And we got in. Mm. Pardon me. Um, uh, I couldn't find our seats properly because somebody was sitting in the place I thought we were going to be sitting, and I was like, "Oh, uh, well, we must be sitting over here then." Because I found two sets of like those benches that I thought were right. Um, we sat down. Movie starts. Ten minutes in, these two people come in and they're going up and down the aisles. They're not trying to duck either. It's they're just walking around. It's like the movie <laughs> has started. Um. Eventually, they basically stand right in front of us, so we can't see the film. And they're like, "You're sitting in our seats." <laughs> Great. And no. it's like, "Oh, okay." I mean, I, I can't. Our seats. I, I mean, if if we were meant to be sitting over there, then there's somebody in them. Basically, they yeah. wouldn't move. So it forced us to separate two of us to go sit in the other side of the cinema um, where our seats were, because it turns out two kids were sitting in the other set of seats that we were meant to have. And, you know, I'm not going to make children move in the middle of a movie. Um, (laughs) And I was fuming for a good, like, half an hour of this movie. And it was that scene 
when that scene comes up and he starts <laughs> playing the piano, it was the first time I cracked a smile. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, like, that's such a shame. Oh, I've I've been melted a little bit by this. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I had (laughs) as we're kind of there. I got I had a similar story. So the cinema we went to, the screening. Bear in mind, this is a View, which for people that don't know, View in the UK is one of the big chains. Mm -hmm. And we were sat. The screening was supposed to start at quarter to seven. We were got into the cinema at quarter to seven. The adverts hadn't started playing, uh, and nothing was sort of happening. It got to five past seven. Nothing had happened. And I went outside and had a word. No, not even five. Yeah, yeah, five something. I went out and had a word. And um, the usher was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go have a chat. And then it was another 10 minutes before then finally the film popped up with no sound. They were still playing like just the, the music they just pump into the auditorium while you're waiting. <laughs> and so then literally like Bowser's Castle's floating in while the ride of the Rahiram is playing which was just in, just mental. The screen hasn't even expanded out to the full screen. Um, the ushers then come back in and Jeannie's gone and spoken and said, this 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 isn't the sound for the film. This is Lord of the Rings music. <laughs> and, so then they've finally gone out to sort it out, got the sound sorted, but then the film is like in this like mini screen for most of it. And we're just like, oh, right, well, it's playing now. We've got the sound, whatever. Um, and then halfway through the film, it suddenly just went to black. And I was like, what? And then finally it expanded out into the full screen. But it was just, it was just so surreal. But like, thankfully, the film is so charming that even though I was like, I- I'll complain. When we go, when we leave, I'll, I'll have a word. I just got out. I was like, I can't be asked. I had such a good time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> such a <fun> film. <laughs> That's very weird. That- <laughs> yeah. So two so Super funny. Mario Brothers horror stories for you guys there you go in a podcast about the mandalorian mm. yes back to yeah. the mandalorian <laughs> but back to mandalorian um well, and we talked about jack black that's how it came up yes oh um, yeah i had a point about that episode yes. actually as well yes. um i the only thing about it when they went into the droid bar i and they were like all oh, these droids are like malfunctioning and stuff i was like are we finally getting a droid revolution <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out no and i was a bit disappointed by that yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you my favorite thing about that episode it's it's then passive aggressively kicking the droids <laughs> the, the droids it's great it is great. i la- i la- i had to stop it i laughed so hard that i was like i can't <laughs> it's like <laughs> you know why not <laughs> Okay, I guess there we are. it worked. We found the bad one. <laughs> it, it worked, <laughs> you know, and then just you know, jumped at it at, from a front freaking window, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, it it worked <laughs> again." So mm. yeah, I I really liked that episode. It was so silly, uh, yeah. that, but I had so much fun with it uh, that I just I just didn't mind it. And I like a little mystery as well. It's not. It's pretty decently put together. Like yeah. The whole yeah. thing about the nano droids and like mm-hmm. how it, it, it all this sort of stuff. It feels very much like um an episode of something you'd get in a crime like drama, like a procedural yeah, yeah, crime yeah. drama. Which doesn't bother me because I love procedural crime dramas. <laughs> it, uh, it felt like an episode of, of Clone Wars. Yeah, Clone really Wars did. had a plenty uh similar episodes that are like just like, you know, if, if they feel a bit out of place and then mm. you know, they're still good yeah. they still work so i'm like and it was it was the one that was directed by bryce dallas howard again it did so you know she did great yeah i just I, like the fact like, that it was so colorful it's like it's, it was it was yeah. incredibly colorful like vibrant episode where everything was just like i i did i love the concept of this society the fact that like the mm-hmm. democracy is like so like everybody votes on everything and mm. nobody has to work. <laughs> it's like, so you've made Utopia. You've managed to actually yeah. kind of make Utopia. And then kind of fixing the droid problem doesn't change the fact that actually this society works. Yeah, yeah. It's like, this is fascinating. Please tell me more. <laughs> it was good. It was good. I don't care what anyone says. I really enjoyed that episode. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, okay, big question. Mm. Big question. What do we think 
what will where where will uh, season four pick up? Because we know that a season four is written. Uh, I have a theory, but I I want to hear if you if you thought about this uh, of of how it's going to continue on. I actually <laughs> haven't had a thought at all, to be honest. No, I kind of uh, the, the episode ended. And I was like, that was really nice ending. I'm just not going to think about this. Thing. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it is kind of a really nice ending for the entire thing. It is. Um, I know that they've got more planned. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I'm like, all right, whatever you want to do, I'll, I guess I'll turn up and see what happens. Yeah, I guess that's it. I'm, you know, we'll be watching either way. So, yeah. I I, I I think I think I'm just kind of thinking more towards Ahsoka and wondering, from the feel of that trailer, it, it I I kind of assume that that's show is going to push on the overarching story a bit more Mm -hmm. especially considering we're bringing in presumably the main villain of this this segment of star wars now so i think i'm yeah i think my eyes are more firmly locked on there as the next continuation of the mandalorian as opposed to season four of mandalorian Mm. okay okay because my my thought is that first of all if i like an ending to it all Mm-hmm. in a way so i was like hmm, this is why i love it and i love their little family life <laughs> on navarro it's it's like the man's know. got himself a house and his kids I eating frogs. <laughs> i love it i was so happy i was like oh yes please i want this for them uh but at the same time we can't forget that they became contractors uh mm-hmm. for the yeah. new republic uh and i think what's going to happen with it is that Ahsoka is going to play an important role in their story. Uh, there are some people who are already saying, like, maybe they're going to pop up in there at some point or another. I don't know if that's going to happen, possibly. Mm, uh, yeah. But I think what's more likely is that we're going to have a huge time jump when season four returns. I, I think that's what's going to happen uh, with it, which I wouldn't mind. Especially if John Favreau is going to be like, you know what, fuck it, and the whole thing is going to open with Grogu talking. <laughs> yeah, it's like people I... finding out that Yaddle talks like a normal person, and they're like, "What the fuck is going on with Yoda?" <laughs> yeah, right? I can't believe they made that decision with Yaddle. I, it's yeah. I'm hoping that Grogu speaks more like Yoda, and maybe it's just the males of the speech. These are just, <laughs> just like, have no concept yeah. of grammar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he tried to say this is the way that you're never going to take that away from me. <laughs> he did. That was so cute. <laughs> Everyone's like, this, this kid just started. What? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that. Mm. And he says, but you all the time. So I consider that as a, as a word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, I, I think I think they're gonna do it, they they either gonna do a massive time jump mm-hmm. or or something like that because I don't think they're just gonna simply pick up from where they left it off. No, I think right there. I feel if it makes sense to do a time jump from that point. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, what is your rating for? Oh, this hang thing? on. I do have yes, a couple yes. other things I'd like to talk yes. about. This. Um, mostly to do with what are your thoughts on yes. kind of. Bo-Katan being the main character of the season because mm. this seems to be the sticking point with most people um that like the, the, a lot of people seem very annoyed that that Din uh is not the main character in his own show uh, which was and my feeling about that was he's never been the main character in his own show no <laughs> no nope. nope. no um, no he actually hasn't has he not uh, since season one, at least, anyway. But like, even in season one, he was kind of barely. The, it, it was like, it, it, for me, it feels more like a Sandman situation, wherein like Morpheus technically is like the thing that this whole thing surrounds, but it's not really about him. Mm-hmm. Mm. It, he's like the he's the the funnel. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. He, he's the thing that um, we view the show through. Yeah, but he's not really the main character of it. I don't know. Mm. I I I really liked being able to actually get to see this person become like you know really take hold of the leadership that she was um uh clearly meant to have but like there were a lot of people annoyed about the fact that he didn't keep hold of the dark saber and didn't start ruling mandalore and i was kind of sitting there like did you really think that was gonna happen like yeah. for real they did they i really actually thought it was that. really interesting that 
he's he just continually struggled to wield the dark saber even mm-hmm. after his his training with it in in book of boba fett you know considering like when you look at star wars as a whole mm. there's a lot of discourse about how much you need to how much we need to see you train in something how much you should have trained in something in order to mm. to to be especially able to use if you're a, thing a or woman do a thing especially <laughs> if you're a woman and here we have a storyline where someone is training to use something but they can't they 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 themselves are resisting it Mm. And that, that's just an that that that's how you detail character, and I think mm. that was really interesting. And the fact that I think it plays into the fact that Bo Katan is more used to leadership than Din in yeah than Din is. Um, Din's good at inspiring people and yeah. rallying people to his cause, but he only wants that as far as to complete the task in hand. Yeah, and that's and then that's him done. And so I think it kind of, as you say, Katie, it does play out to both their characters a lot better mm. yeah that's what I felt I just it was it was just really strange to me it seeing so many people be like uh get, feel genuinely hurt by this concept that like he's not getting the attention that he deserves I guess or something like that and I was like I don't know if you have been watching the same show as I have but he's never wanted the attention <laughs> nor has he never really looked for it he just turns up places and is like well I guess I have to deal with this now <laughs> Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 The only I thing he's ever really cared about is Grogu. And yeah. That's it. Exactly. And that was there. Like, you know, the whole season, this season, and every season was about him, you know, wanting the best for Grogu. So I'm like, plus, Grogu not only came out with a new dad, but like, even though it's not official in the same way, he also has a mum now. Let's be real. <laughs> in a way, <laughs> they're a little family <laughs> unit. And you can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> Grogu saved both his parents by stopping the fire. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Oh, that scene was hmm. Oh, it was great. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I uh yeah. It's like what what have you been watching? <laughs> the like best. I feel like you haven't been watching the same show at no, this point. No. <laughs> no, you, I never looked at Din Jarin as, as being the main character. Mm. I think he's the perfect example of a side character just constantly getting into big things mm. when he's not even want to be there <laughs> in a way mm. uh lens. and and he's still the lens for the show that's what yeah I was yeah, yeah exactly and 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 still having an impact and 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 you know uh still having his own story mm. inside these bigger stories uh which he's i just, think it's great a guy living his life that's exactly. kind of the thing he's not really like he's not main character he's just a dude who lives in world <laughs> mm-hmm I'm just um, a guy trying to make my way through the universe. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just uh, I, I just also find it very funny that he uh is especially that entirety of season two, I sent this to Lily when it happened, where it was like, this man can't stop getting just like fucked, basically. <laughs> 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 Turns up on Mandalore and he's like, Wow, this place is not cursed. It's great. And then he gets yeah. kidnapped by a very big robot. And then <laughs> finally, when he gets rescued, he's like, all right, I'm going to go bathe myself in the waters of Mandalore to redeem myself. Immediately falls Flop. from the ground. <laughs> that made me laugh so much. Like, yeah, that's that. this is why I like him. He's just yeah. like, he can't. Um, yeah. What was it? It was break. even in, it was even when they, they had that dog fight with all the ties. Hmm. And he ejected out of the gauntlet to get into his starfighter. As he lands on the platform, just face plants the, the platform. And I'm like, there he is. There's Din Djarin. That, yeah, that's that is him. your Din Djarin. And yeah, he is him. perfect. Yeah, <laughs> just the way he is. <laughs> but, then, but then he has like incredible moments, like in the mm-hmm. final episode, that hallway scene, you know, he, he got his mm. hallway scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was great. It was. It was, it was really great. Was. It was so good. Like, I, I don't know how the stunt performer can fight in that armor like that, but my gosh, it's impressive. It is yep. very, very yep. impressive. <laughs> You're like, that's good. That's good yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I guess, my last question, because yes. this seems to be a sticking point with people, I didn't realise it was going to be such a, a divisive thing, because I don't have a concept of it beyond this show. Yeah. But the Darksaber is gone, and people seem really confu- conflicted about this. What are the thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess... I th- yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I was like, cool. I, 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 it seems happens. like a completely <laughs> boring piece of material anyway. <laughs> Well, so, and I think I think what it stands to prove is that Bo-Katan has been chasing this thing Mm-mm. 
as the sign of I am the rightful leader of Mandalore. Mm. When actually the thing that stopped her that, that stopped her people properly following her was when she when she, you know, she traded in Mandalore mm. for presumable safety and then boom. But I think that she the way that she led them in that final fight against Moff Gideon just proves she is meant to lead. And you know, they 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 stand, you know, even after the Darksaber is destroyed and she relights the fires everyone is there do you know what i mean like yeah. she brought them back in the end and dark saber or not she is the leader i think it just stands to prove that she doesn't need this object it, yeah it feels to me like it's it, some kind of object that people have been resting laurels on for a really long time mm. where they're like they, they've held it up as something so important in this narrative where it's like this means so many things and the fact yeah. that they were like you know what it doesn't need to be, and they just broke it, and people are like, "What are they meant to do with this now?" I've just thought as well, like this whole season spent its time breaking down the myths and stories of Mandalore, mm-hmm. right? That Mandalore was cursed. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. That mythosaurs don't exist anymore. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. That um, uh, that the Din's clan and Bo's night owls can't coexist because they have different beliefs. Well, yes, they can. You know, it was all kind of a big breaking down. No, mm-hmm. no, no, man, no Mandalorians survive on Mandalore. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. There's the guys on the skiff. So, I think the the dark saber was just the cherry on the icing of that that cake. Really, at the end of it. Yeah, and it yeah. It, it it was always the source of conflict between yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was actually really glad that it it, it was gone. And yeah. that's a great point. That's kind of the point I was trying to make originally. Yeah. Everything that it represents has been destroyed. So yeah. the metaphor it's is then like complete. We are now able to fully begin anew in a new yeah. space. We can do, we can rebuild and we don't have something that is like, I feel like it's a pretty decent metaphor for the way that British <laughs> culture works, basically, <laughs> in that it probably would be really good for us if we destroyed a lot of stuff. Yeah, that uh, is um, insistent on tying us back to uh, a, a past based on tradition. And <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, that makes me. I, I I take those words and I look ahead to Saturday the sixth of May. <laughs> oh my god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll say yeah. no more because I'm sure you'll get stalled with someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. Ratings. Ratings for season three. What do we think on a scale of Ratings. one to ten? Katie, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you, you, okay, Elia, you're thinking too. Yeah, I think maybe the first number that came straight to my head was seven point five. So I, I, I'll stick to that hmm. because that's where my intuition went. Okay, Katie. Yeah, like around eight. I feel like yeah, somewhere I around that area. A solid <laughs> eight. It's it's mainly because I wanted more mm. <laughs> in a way uh, more more uh, more, more. <laughs> do we do this every i swear we do this every yeah yeah every time. <laughs> more more uh, so yeah i i think that's that's the only reason i'm giving it an eight because uh i feel like in a way that was more to this yeah that we just didn't get to see but at the same time i'm i'm also like not dissatisfied no. or anything I, but... I agree with you entirely no. on that I, I assessment. had fun mm-hmm. exactly I had fun that, and I think that's the most important thing because also there's a lot of discourse about um, does it hold up after we've been given Andor and I'm like, like they're, they're different shows both think, yeah, Stop they're comparing different shows them. with different setups <laughs> and both can coexist as good pieces exactly. of Star Wars yeah exactly. they satisfy different Itches. Itches. Yeah, I was going to say that, and then I was like, that seems weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. But it works. It works. <laughs> uh, all righty then. So, uh, this was us with uh, our special guest, Elliot, who's going to tell you now where you can find him if he's mm. not here with us. <laughs> yes. Uh, find me predominantly active on Twitter at Hakuna Machata, also on YouTube at Hakuna Machata, as I said at the top of the show two lovely Star Wars videos on the channel, a new fresh from Celebration. So do check them out, please. And uh, the main 
guise of the channel is to look at diversity and representation within film and TV and put the positive lens on it all because it's great and we love it. Woo. There you go. Amen to Dan. Uh, all right. Uh, so we have a lot of things lined up uh, for the future. Uh, we're going to see Elliot again. Please. That's I like 100%. coming here. Yes. Mm, we like having you here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, and, and we have some extra special guests as well mm -hmm. very soon. Uh, but until then, don't forget, watch movies. Mm -hmm.